Across our science classrooms, we pride ourselves on learning science by doing science. Our teachers take an inquiry-based approach to instruction, where students are involved in teaks-based experiential learning. In Texas, our science curriculum is organized and taught in three common categories from kindergarten through eighth grade. Life science, where students learn about how living organisms interact with their environments. Physical science, where students learn about matter and its role in the universe. And earth science, where students learn about the earth's structures and processes. In high school, students deepen their knowledge and prepare for more content-specific courses, such as biology, chemistry, and physics. There are more opportunities for advanced dual credit and AP offerings in upper grades as well. Carl Sagan said, science is more than a body of knowledge. It is a way of thinking. Our goal is to teach students to think scientifically. Beginning in the 2018-2019 school year, all Berkner feeder campuses intensified their focus on STEAM instruction through a refined approach through project-based learning across all content areas. Since then, science teachers district-wide are using components of STEAM discovery in daily instruction. One main teaching method RISD uses in science is called the 5E model. This 5E model and teaching method is the backbone to inquiry-based learning and occurs through all grade levels by providing a series of opportunities for students to deepen their knowledge and master science concepts at high levels through engagement in the scientific process. Just like all other content areas, student success in science is directly correlated to reading and comprehension skills. Our focus in science is for students to practice science literacy every day. A great way for you to be confident is for you to actually know the words that you are talking about, know the words that you are reading or the words that are placed before you. And if you know the words as a young student, you're more likely to engage in those types of topics and, and challenge yourself with new topics. So for me, when it comes to vocabulary, I find that it's the foundation of comprehension, but it's also the foundation for interest. And so if we are pulling in kids' interest with those vocabulary words that apply to the things that they want to know, we are enabling them to be problem solvers later on in life. Since science is so heavy on academic vocabulary, teachers place emphasis on interactive word walls to increase engagement and make personalized meaning of new ideas and concepts. Teachers also use anchor charts to support deeper thinking and ongoing connections of cross-cutting concepts within the three strands. In our early elementary science classrooms, 80% of instructional time is devoted to descriptive and comparative investigations. Descriptive investigations allow students to collect data, to draw conclusions about a natural or man-made system, while comparative investigations allow students to collect data under different conditions or variables for comparison purposes. Then, beginning in third grade, students start controlled experiments in which they measure variables to support or not support a causal relationship, a process known as experimental investigation. All three types of investigations continue for the duration of a student's K-12 journey, with an increasing emphasis on experimentation and increased rigor as they progress. I start with the end in mind. I try to make sure that I know where the kids are going in science. I think that science gives them the perfect opportunity to be curious and have fun and move about the classroom and just engage and explore. In our dual language elementary classrooms, students receive instruction in English and Spanish as they are growing their English language skills. It is important that students develop the science concepts in their native language, but as they progress through the grades, they gradually receive more and more science instruction in English. We have a 90-10, a which 90% is in Spanish. We're building on their um, language, their dominant language and then the 10% is in, of course, in English, and we teach that during our math, science, and ESL. Yo lo enseño uh, todos los días porque en todo lo que se ve en nuestro alrededor están las ciencias. Los colores son importantes, conocer eso, medir, able to me measure. Uh, el, el, el pesar, what weighs more, what weighs less. Y poquito podemos salir afuera y encuentran algo y, y hacen la pregunta, ¿qué es? 
also if we go outside and they, they see something, a, a bug, well, what is this? Well, you're teaching science. They're learning. They're asking those questions that are so important. Libélula. Crisálida, sí, es crisálida. Eso va, va a ser mariposas. ¿Sabes cuántas son? ¿Cuántas crisálidas ves? Una, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Son cinco. cinco. How many legs does a spider have? One, two, three. By fourth grade, nearly all science instruction is in English with ESL support for students in their second language acquisition. Within our junior high campuses, science students spend 40% of their time on laboratory and field investigations. In seventh grade, much of the focus is on organisms and the environment. Eighth grade students continue learning about life science, and we add instruction relating to matter and energy and force and motion and earth and space science. Junior high students become familiar with different modes of scientific inquiry, rules of evidence, ways of formulating questions, ways of proposing explanations, and the diverse ways scientists study the natural world. I am always so excited about everything in science. So I take science vacations with my family. It's a true story. I'm really excited about it. And I want to share that with them. But I also try to think about how does this apply to them in real life? Why are we doing this? Yes, it is true. It is a teak and we're going to follow the state thing. But why? Like for instance, and a little bit later on in the lesson, we talk about the Trinity Aquifer. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about like, why does that matter mm -hmm. about getting water? And then the next lesson that we're doing is we're doing a UN sustainability lesson. I try to focus on the four C's for STEM. And I think about what's really important mm -hmm. for a job, I mean, those four C's. My previous life, I was a scientist. I was a marine biologist. Uh -huh. Previous work experience that really taught me that memorizing every single thing is not as important as the four C's and knowing how to apply your knowledge, where to get it, you know, how to work together. This is actually a six month long PBL where they had to design a city from scratch. This is all to scale. So they had to figure out a scale. It's amazing. They had to do zoning. They had to figure out what would their healthcare look like. There's a windmill up there. We got to talk about the flow of energy, which is the seventh grade teeth. The way that I approach science is usually I try to approach it as more interdisciplinary. Really, that's what life is. Yes, we follow the teaks. That is definitely number one. But if you notice, so here for like Future City, when we talk about it, we were also able to talk about not just the content teaks, but the process teaks. We did all of those things that we also do in science. High school students dig deeper into their more focused science courses. RSD offers biology, chemistry, physics, environmental systems, integrated physics and chemistry, and several other advanced science courses that build on previous concepts. I try to instill in my students, it doesn't matter what you go into, you're going to have to evaluate claims. And so that's what should come out of your science classes, is you have a broader set of tools to evaluate the world with. A quarter of all of your formulas have to do with waves. So let's go ahead and break this down. We started off the unit by investigating transverse waves by building a gummy bear wave machine. And then we moved on so to, cool. yeah, it was a lot of fun. The kids so had a lot cool. of fun with it, right? And so, and then we moved on to standing waves, first harmonic to the second harmonic to the third harmonic and finding that actual pattern. And then within the larger context of the unit, figuring out like if this wave pulse overlaps with this wave pulse, what will I get? And then we're going to move into talking about how that relates to sound. The goal is to overlay all of these learning opportunities so that they have things that we can connect back to. And I'm a very strong believer that we should keep coming back to common experiences. And that's the role of the teacher and it's the job of the teacher to provide those common experiences. Because a lot of times we assume that the kids have had common experiences yes. and that's not a true statement. What they got in one classroom may look different than what they got in another classroom. And so we need to have this common language where the students can talk to one another about the experiences that they've had in my classroom. Um, and a lot of times they bring up other things that they've seen. Oh, like back in eighth grade, we did this. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about right here. I'm so glad that you made that connection. And then that way we're able to build forward and they're able to see how all of this stuff just layers on top of each other. What you just said was really, like that is the exemplar for equity. Yeah. Like how do I ensure that I'm providing experiences for each kid that they can connect to and bring back to learning yeah, and that's like that's true. what that work is yeah, really about. Very true. 
From pre-K through our advanced high school courses, we want RISD students to have experiences in science to help them think like a scientist. We want them to have wonder and curiosity about how and why things work the way they do. Science should be the time in a child's day where exploration and trial and error is fostered and discovery is celebrated. We believe strongly in the parent and school partnership. As a parent, you don't need to have a degree in science to help your child be successful. What's important is your ability to nurture their curiosity so they grow more comfortable with opportunities to discover what they don't know yet. Consider allowing your child to ask questions and take time to explore with them to find possible solutions. Science happens around us every day. Thank you for spending time keeping tabs on RISD and learning more about how we approach science and STEM and how it lays a foundation for many important areas of interest and ultimately career choices.